I'm going to begin this video in prayer. Heavenly Father, you've told me to speak from my heart and that you're with me and you uphold me, and I just thank you for that. I thank you so much for that. And I ask, Heavenly Father, that the excellency of your Spirit be upon this to, to do with these words and this understanding as you have chosen in this hour to do and that accomplish the things that are in your heart to accomplish. And I just thank you. I thank you so, so, so much. Um, I, I just really need to speak from my heart. Um, I have known and sensed that we are, we are in the tribulation timetables. And, and uh, for the last couple of days, I've been hearing the Lord tell me um, that um, it's time. And I know that we've just been through the, we're just coming into this new Jewish new year. And at this September going into October, this is, this is a new Jewish time according to the feast. And God is going to be doing everything according to the feast. And um, the last three feasts are going to be fulfilled um, in Christ. And just as the first four were, for, were, were fulfilled, it's all happening. A um, couple of weeks ago, I really felt like what I was hearing the Lord show me is that the four horsemen of the apocalypse have, have come forth. Um, I, felt, I feel like I have a sense I know what that was and is. Um, but we're well within the timetables and, and I'm just going to share from my heart. Um, I, I read the word, I read the prophets and I walk with God and, and, um, I'm his little girl and, and I, I can't just say, oh, this is why, and this, this means this. And it, it, it's, it's so big and what's coming is so grand and wonderful. Um, I just need to speak with my heart from my heart to you. But I, you know, as the Lord's spokesman or somebody who he's raised up at the end of time to be a voice, it's important for me to relay this to you, the, the message that it's in my heart for you to hear. Um, we're, I, what I've been watching for is the appearance of the Antichrist. He's there behind the scenes. He's, he's with the rulers. And if you haven't figured out who the rulers are yet, I'm sorry. But they're very powerful people that are manipulating the nations. There are only a handful of them. I call them the rulers. And um, the enemy's back behind the scenes, manipulating a lot of stuff, getting everything ready for what he wants, which is a one world order, a one world government where everybody has to be beholden unto him. So it's, we're, we're just all, it's all happening. The, there's a, uh, the nations really have been shaking. There's a lot happening to the nations to cause there to be a collapse of people, of human rights, of people's rights and their law courts and their parliament, parliamentation, their representation. And there's a, there's a push to destroy all that. It's, it's real, it's happening. But, um, I, my just sense of everything is, is that we're, we're quickly coming forth. I, I was reading the prophet Jeremiah, uh, uh, you know, a month and a half ago, and, and I felt like I could see what was coming. I, I thought, wow, what he's talking about Jerusalem is for the end of time also. It's for the end of time also. And, and I just looked at it and I thought, this is what's, this is what's coming. And um, I, we know that the um, elect... The 144,000 will be called by the Lord to come to him. Um, I believe it's part of the body of Christ. I've always felt that. Every time I pray about it, I see the Lord with the ephod around his neck. He's our high priest. He has the nef ephod with the 12 tribes, the stones for the 12 tribes around his neck. I saw the light going into the stones and bouncing around the rainbow colors. It was really cool. And um, he smiled at me when I was praying about it. And um, every time I pray about it, I hear the seed of Abraham. Well, guess what? Through Christ, everyone who's a believer has become part of that covenant with Abraham. That's why the New Covenant, the New, the, the New Testament talks so extensively about who we are and through the covenant of Abraham. We've come forth through that covenant. And I saw that vision, and I've talked about it on one of my videos. I was with the Lord at nighttime. And Abraham had his arm around Sarah, and they were standing at the at the 
uh, western seashore uh, facing the Mediterranean Sea of, of Israel, of the land that they were living in, the land of promise. And you could see the tail of the dragon sweep up to knock some of the stars out of the sky, which is a fulfillment of something that happens at the end of time. And, but they were looking at the fulfillment of their covenant, that their offspring would be like the stars of heaven in the sands of the sea. It would, it would just be so numerous that God would bless the nations through Christ. And so God took an incorruptible seed, a holy seed, and he sowed it into the earth as our Passover lamb. He buried it in unleavened bread, and then he rose it up as first fruits on the third day, which is that life coming forth from out of the dead, and the, the first fruits of many that would come after that, who are given resurrection life in Christ. Fifty days later, we had Pentecost, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It didn't just fall on the apostles. It fell on 120 people. And it was it, it just continued to explode and go forth, that baptism of fire over all of the believers for hundreds of years. And the early church took the gospel out on all those Roman roads and took it all over the known empire of the Rome and took it to the furthest reaches of the earth for hundreds of years under that powerful anointing, which we still have. Um, but at the end of time, there's a fulfillment. There's a judgment that comes. There's a harvest. And if you look at the feast, it's all playing out. And what I'm hearing from the Lord is it's time now for the harvest. We're not going to see millions of people coming into the kingdom. We're going to see billions. And we need to be ready. And the only thing he keeps telling me is make room for people to sit in your home. Make room for what's coming. Make room. There are going to be people everywhere coming into the kingdom. And they're going to be so hungry for Christ for his word, to have understanding, and to, to, to develop and grow in him and adhere to him. And it's going to be marvelous. And, and as much as you know the word, the word of God, you know, we, we, we are to know it, to eat it, to meditate on it, to breathe it, to have it in us so that it can pour out of us as it's needful, you know, pour out of us. And um, anyway, um. I just, I just marvel at the Lord. I, I'm going to go back. This is where I'm at right now. I, I'm in the book of Revelations. So I'm going line by line with the Lord, and I'm writing things down that he's showing me. And I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, I know what it means, because I don't. I've always been little, and I've always been overwhelmed by the book of Revelation. I'm like, oh, how do I interpret this? How do I understand that? You know, and I know we have to humble ourselves and put everything before the Lord, and he, he does open things, and he has been, and um, I can't sit there and say, oh, I see all of it, but I'm going to go ahead and put this word out right now. Um, it's probably too early, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I felt like he was saying, speak and speak from your heart. It's good. Um, you know, you just stumble upon stuff. I, I, I know that uh, when it's time for the trumpets to start blowing, the, the golden censers of incense are in the heavens and it's the it's the prayers of the saints and the prayers that have been coming up and the incense but the golden censers they're gold only on yom kippur i found that when i was googling around only on yom kippur did they use the golden censers so it, it's like i i thousands of years have gone by since the jewish people really celebrated in the land of israel the feast and, and we're sowing the crops, the, the seasonal crops that went in alignment with the feast, the things that were given as offerings in alignment with the feast. I've always wanted to understand deeply what all those things mean. And it, you have to piece it together. You, you look at so much information and thank God bless the Messianic believers, which are the Jewish Christians. They, the Jews who've come into their... Um, you know, born again experience with Christ, the Messiah, they see it's like a light bulb turning on when they see all the understanding and they're, they're able to share so much information with the body of Christ, which is so rich. But even looking back at the end of time of, on the feast, it's like I want so deeply and badly for so much of it to come out and be explained to me and, and for it to really come up and, and to be known to me. And I'm going to keep digging because 
we're seeing the last three feasts uh, pan out. The Feast of Trumpets, which is really basically the days of awe, repent, 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 get your heart right with God. Yom Kippur, which is judgment, which will come. It will come very powerfully. And um, at the end of time, you know, I was getting into that. We know that the elect are going to get called up. But um, we also, um, I believe in scripture. I believe that the Lord will start coming down. Every eye will see him. The dead will rise. And we, are, we who are here will be changed. I don't know how it's all going to play out. I, I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. But this video is to let you know my gut tells me we're well into this. My gut tells me the Antichrist is about to appear. My gut tells me that these armies surrounding Jerusalem and Israel are going to intensify. And we're going to see armies coming into Israel. Um, and then I'm really hoping the Lord just comes down at that point. I'm, that's kind of how I see it. But it's all happening. And But know this, you know, um, if you're here, the dead are going to start rising and then you who are here who believe in Christ are going to be changed. And also, I want to get into this thing about this pull. There's a pull of going toward God and a pull going toward hell happening all over the world. And um, I believe that God is going to overwhelm the darkness and the evil that's in the earth with the greatness of his coming and his truth and light. And I believe that we're about to see a powerful harvest come upon the world where many, many, many people come into the kingdom. But um, these last three feasts, Trumpets and Yom Kippur, the, are the Feast of Judgment. And then the, the, the Feast of Booths, which is where you tabernacle with God. And, and, and it's the celebration of a new time. That's the millennial 1,000-year reign of Christ on the earth. One day is as a thousand years. I've gone into these all this before on videos that the one day is a thousand years. I've done, I've done explanations of that. You need to look at, I've talked about the feast before you need to look at that, but I just want you to understand we're, we're coming into this and um, we're coming into the end. I also want to caution people about this. Um, it, it, it's tragic to me. We've had some very, very powerful celestial signs. We've had blood, uh, blood moons over Jerusalem at Passover and at the New Year. We've had it happen four different times uh, at Rosh Hashanah. It's, it's the, God is speaking. That's, that's not coincidence. We've had uh, planetary alignments, and we've had Revelation chapter 12 with the woman with the 12 stars on her head and the moon beneath her feet um, clothed in the sun. That has already played out. That played out in 2017. And I've been astounded that church leaders and people aren't talking about it. But what you've got to understand is I think there are a lot of really good pastors out there that care very deeply about their congregations. Maybe they don't know what's going on. But you've got to understand at the time of Christ when he first came, the religious leaders were oblivious. They, they didn't get it. They, they, they were missing it. He was walking around right in front of them, the Messiah, and they were missing it. And I'm doing this video today because I want people to understand you need to get it. You need to understand. Don't be following the crowd, waiting for somebody to go, oh, well, you know, we're here. This is what's happening. You need to be pursuing the Lord. You need to be reading the word and praying and saying, God, what is your will? What 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 is your kingdom? come. What, what do you want me to be doing? Where are we with all this? Open my heart, my understanding. What can I do? I hear my hands, hear my feet. Here, here, here's my, my life and my, my voice. And, and here I am, here I am. Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. I, I want to serve you. I'm, I'm ready. You know, here I am, you know, here we are. And, um, I'm doing this video because I feel like the Lord told me to. So anyway, I'm going to pray one more time. Heavenly Father, I, I just ask that, you know, our hearts be in alignment and our eyes see and our ears hear and that we have the hope of the glory that's coming, 
the hope of the kingdom that's quickly coming forth and that we all be involved, that we are able to roll our sleeves up and be really involved with this harvest that's coming and labor. All of us are going to be called to labor. Some go out at early morning and start laboring, some later in the day, some later in the afternoon, and some at the very end of the harvest day, but they labor and they all receive their reward for laboring in the harvest. May we all labor and may he thrust us into the harvest. Thank y'all. God bless you. Bye-bye.